An active pattern of weather across the United States over the last two weeks is going to come to an end this weekend. We will have quieter weather, but will it last? We have our first peak at March next at the Weather Farm. Welcome to the Weather Farm for your Wednesday. We are tracking that snowstorm that has made its way out of the Central Plains, now moving through the Ohio Valley and through the Southeast. It is bringing heavy amounts of snow and heavy rain down along the coast. By tomorrow morning, it will make its way to the East Coast, bringing heavy snows to places like Norfolk, Virginia. And out West, we take a look at another heavy rain event and heavy mountain snow that is impacting British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and all the way down into California. Will this pattern last? We've seen for over the last two weeks, several rounds of heavy precipitation, but we do have signs that this pattern is coming to an end. And we're going to talk about that later in the forecast. But I do want to go back and talk about the snowfall. This is through 10 p.m. on Wednesday night. We have seen widespread four to six inches across parts of Kansas. As we get towards Hayes, Kansas, towards Wichita, we've seen six to eight inches of snow. And that swath of heavy snow has continued through central Missouri. And by the time we get to our Wednesday, it's going to be Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia that are going to get in on that action. And by the time we get to our Thursday afternoon, places along the Gulf Coast are going to have seen over an inch of rain stretching from Louisiana through southern Mississippi and Alabama, even into the panhandle of Florida, over an inch of rain. While to the north, we've seen generally a quarter to an inch to a half inch of rain. As we look out west, we are going to see that heavy rainfall continuing for parts of British Columbia where excess of one inch of rain is likely. As we make our way down the coast to southwestern Oregon, one, two, possibly three inches of rain for areas near the California and Oregon border. And across the Midwest where that snowstorm has continued to move across the central plains into the Ohio Valley, we could see an additional six inches of snow across parts of Missouri on top of the six inches that we've seen through 10 p.m. on our Wednesday night. That could bring some totals to near 12 inches of snow by the time this is all done. But as that system moves through Kentucky, it will spread a widespread two to four inches across the Commonwealth. Parts of northwestern Tennessee could also see an additional three to four inches. The other big story that we've been talking about all week is the extreme brutal cold that has been bottled up in parts of Saskatchewan, Montana, Manitoba, and North Dakota. Just this morning, we saw temperatures fall into 44 degrees below zero in parts of North Dakota. Bismarck, you went down to 38 degrees below zero. We're going to see widespread, not as cold as we have been, but generally temperatures 20, 30, as much as 35 to 40 degrees below normal across the upper plains. And contrast that to what's happening up in Alaska. We see temperatures on our Wednesday morning across Alaska. Across the North Slope, we do see temperatures 20, 35, nearing 40 degrees below zero. That's not uncommon for this time of year. But as we make our way down towards Fairbanks, we see temperatures in the single digits and teens. We make our way down along the coast, the southern coast. Of, uh, we're going to see temperatures in the low 20s for their overnight lows. So it is warmer in Alaska than it is for most of the central plains into the Ohio Valley and northeast to begin our Wednesday. And what's causing all this? Well, this is the setup of, at the 500 millibar anomaly map as we begin our Wednesday morning we see a large anomalously high uh, 500 millibar heights centered over Hudson Bay. We see a little trough across Nebraska that is sweeping through the central plains into the Ohio Valley. And so what is causing all this is that strong ridge that's over the Hudson Bay. It is suggesting a significant warming in that stratosphere, a persistent high latitude forcing such as an amplified positive North Atlantic oscillation, which we have seen. And this is also causing upstream ridging across the Pacific. So while we have this big blocking high 
in Hudson Bay, it's backing up the bridging all the way across British Columbia into Yukon and up into Alaska. So that warm air is surging extremely far north. And what it's doing, it then dislodges the 500 millibar trough into the lower 48. So that's why we see these uh, lower than normal 500 millibar heights across the central plains into the eastern half of the United States. And so this is trapping that polar air uh, down into the lower 48. And they will continue in some fashion over the next two weeks. But we do have signs that they, that pattern is going to change. And we're going to get to that a little bit later in this video. And as we wake up for our Thursday, as I mentioned, that energy that has moved off the coast that brought that heavy snow or to Norfolk, Virginia on Wednesday, it has moved off the coast. We do see some lingering snow showers. This is really associated with an upper level low that is swinging out of Iowa through Illinois and Indiana. Uh, overnight Wednesday into Thursday morning. And though there's enough strong winds at the 500 millibar level that it's going to create enough churn in the atmosphere that it's going to create some snow showers. And this snow showers, because of the very cold temperatures, we're going to get really fluffy snow. So it's going to, uh, whatever little moisture there is in the atmosphere, we're going to have ratios around 20 to 25 to 1. So we could easily fluff up to a half an inch to an inch and a half of snow. And out west, we do see also scattered showers across uh, the Intermountain West, across parts of Idaho, making their way into Yellowstone. And as I mentioned, Norfolk, Virginia, by the time you, this is over, you're going to be in the bullseye for 8 to 12 inches of snow. And that's going to extend back to Richmond, where you could see about 5 to 6 inches of snow by the time we get to Thursday morning. And Thursday continues that trend of the temperatures easing ever so slow, slightly. 25 to 20 degrees below zero across most of the central plains. And that 15 degrees below zero stretches all the way down to central Kansas. Parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas could be sub-zero. We have sub-zero temperatures in the extreme northeast and the teens and 20s are making their way into southern Texas. And Brownsville, Texas, you could be waking up to temperatures near 40 degrees for our Thursday. Even down into Florida, we're going to get a touch of this cooler weather. As Orlando, Tampa, you're going to be hovering around 50 degrees for your morning lows. And the real 60s and near 70 are going to be really confined to far southern Florida. And once we get past Thursday, Friday is a generally quiet day thanks to this high pressure that's going to be centered over Missouri. We do see another system starting to make its way on shore into the Pacific Northwest, specifically into British Columbia. During the day on Friday, that's going to continue to bring rain and snow to that area, as well as to Oregon and Washington. But let's put our maps into motion as we move past this Friday into next week and close out the month of February. So as I mentioned, we're going to see that system move on shore during the day on Friday. High pressure across most of the United States. We're going to watch an area of disturbed weather in the Gulf. It may bring some showers to your Sunday plans across parts of Florida. We're going to see some light snow across the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes. But we're going to turn our attention to that low pressure diving out of Saskatchewan and Manitoba, bringing some snow to the Great Lakes in Northeast. Well, yet another system makes its way on shore for our Monday. That energy is going to kind of bring some light showers to Iowa through the Ohio Valley by the time we get to Tuesday. That low is going to continue to sit and spin across parts of Quebec, bringing a daily chance of light snow showers to the Ontario, Quebec, and the Northeast. And But really, our weather does quiet down for our Thursday. But as we get to Friday, we start to see another system starting to form in Mississippi, and that system is going to get a lot of energy and can potentially race up the northeast coast by the time we get to the end of February. Still a long ways out, over 10 days away from now, but it is something that we are going to watch. This is the CFS V2 uh, map. So this is looking down from the North Pole into the Northern Hemisphere. So the United States is right here, 
And on the other side of the world, we have Asia and Europe. And we see Greenland here. And so this first picture in the upper left shows the pattern that we've been in uh, for most of this week. We've seen the below uh, normal height contours across the eastern half of the United States. We've seen that strong ridging across the Canadian provinces that has dislodged a lot of the colder air down into the lower 48. As we move down into the second image right below it, we're going to see that high pressure that was centered over the Hudson Bay. We're going to see it replaced with an area of low pressure, of lower 500 millibar height contours. And so that's going to then put some ridging out to the west. It's going to warm up Alaska as we close out our February and our March. And that ridging that's going to build over the western half of the United States, it's really going to try to push eastward, but it's going to run into that, that blocking pattern with that trough over the Hudson Bay. So it's really not going to make its way fully eastward. We jump to the upper right. The, this is the first week of March. And we have our eyes set somewhere around March 3rd through March 6th. We are looking at some modeling that's suggesting a big uh, spring win winter storm somewhere in the eastern half of the United States. This is now three weeks out from today. A lot can change from now, so we're not really going to get into the specifics of amounts and location and what type of precipitation we could see. But the models are, are starting to hint at something around the 3rd through the 6th of March. And we see that here with that trough of colder air digging across the eastern half of the United States. We see that ridging that was across parts of the west. The real strong ridging moves up towards Alaska and between Siberia. So we're going to see, again, cold air spilling into the eastern half of the United States. But if we look at the bottom right image, we see that by the time we get to the middle of March, we see ridging building across the United States, and the cold air has been retreating up north. We're going to see that Arctic Oscillation go positive once again and stay positive, keeping that Arctic air north of the Arctic Circle. And so that's, again, why we think around the 3rd through the 6th, we're going to see this big storm. And then it's that storm that's going to alter the weather pattern for the lower 48 as we get towards the second week of March. Now, the timing, again, still a lot to be determined, but we're starting to see signs of a major pattern change somewhere around that second week of March. And when we look at the Pacific uh, North American Oscillation, uh, we see some confirmation of that as well. We see that it's been positive here, and that generally leads to colder than normal air across the eastern half of the United States. But around the 1st of March, the 3rd of March, somewhere around there, we start to see that PNA go negative. And when the PNA goes negative, we see strong ridging across the eastern and central Pacific, and that's why we saw the strong ridging up into the Gulf of Alaska. We see a trough then develop across the western half of the United States. So as the air gets up over Alaska, the cold air sinks into the western part of the United States and ridging uh, over the eastern half of the United States. So it's going to warm up across the eastern half of the United States. It also causes stormier and wetter conditions for the west coast, drier conditions uh, for the southeastern part of the United States, and generally normal uh, precipitation and warmer temperatures across the eastern half of the United States. Right now we see, again, a pattern change around the 10th of March that will usher in some warmer air across the United States. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this Outlook video. Um, as the weather calms down, like, subscribe, share this video. Let your friends and family know where you get your content. We'd love to hear what's on your mind. Leave comments. We love interacting with our fans and responding to the questions and comments that they have for us. We hope you have a wonderful Wednesday, and we will see you again real soon.